Hi, I'm Steve, 84XT, and welcome to Ham Radio Portable. If you like operating portable, building wire antennas, and occasionally looking at some new products, uh, this channel's for you. So hit that like and subscribe. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take a look into this. This is the Spider Beam 12 meter fiberglass telescopic pole. It's very heavy duty. And let's take a further look at it. When Spider Beam says heavy duty mask, uh, they mean it. This, uh, this pole here weighs in at a little over seven pounds and that's about what their specs say on it. When collapsed, the pole measures right at four foot. You might say three foot ten inches is what the specs say. And uh, so it's, it's not one that's going to slip into your backpack. It has 11 telescoping segments that just pull up. And I put a little tape on my first segment and so I can grab it out. But these segments, like most poles that you see that where you can't use the top segment, this top segment is very robust. I mean, it, I, I put things on the top segment. So they pull up and you just give them a little snatch. And this thing goes up to 40, right at 40 foot, 12 meters. So it's a very, very tall pole. Handle about any knee that you might have. So let's, uh, let's deploy this thing. See what it looks like. This is how I deploy this pole. I just tie it off with some paracord at the top and I got in three points about three times the length of the pole in three different spots. This is just for being portable. I use a uh, hose clamp here with some silicone tubing at the top to tie off with. It's staked three times and I also put an additional stake right here at the base of it and tie it off with one of these little bungee doodads. Uh, that's just to keep the base from slipping or anything but usually you can punch out a hole with your heel and uh, it will hold it into place. So let's just raise this pole up and let you see how high it is. Let's pull the cap off and deploy this thing. Like I said, I, I tie off my first one uh, with some masking tape to keep it from sliding back down inside. And what you do with these antennas, is you pull them up to the next segment and you give them a tug and a twist, just like that. Up again to the next segment, tug and a twist at the same time. And just keep going up. And that is it, all 40 foot of her. Well, this is a look at it at its full deployed height. Going all the way up to the top there. And that's a lot of height for wire antenna. In retrospect, I'll show you a fan dipole that I have in my yard and it's at 29 30 foot and this this pole is even higher than that so I have used it 
a few times in the backyard. Very robust. If you're going to use this mast for a more permanent setup at the house in the backyard, uh, they recommend putting uh, clamps and they sell a clamp kit. This clamp here is just to hold the, uh, the guy ropes on and I, you can make them yourself out of hose, hose clamps. You want to put the clamp over the segment here, not over the one it's going into. This keeps it from accidentally telescoping back down into the, to the mask itself, which can happen. So for a permanent setup, you're going to have wind and stuff. Uh, put your additional clamps all the way up it, and I think that will hold very well. And collapsing it back down is just as easy. Give a little tug, try to do each segment one at a time. Just give it a little tap. Just like that. Let's take another look at all 40 foot of it. tied some uh, flagging tape where we can see the top so it becomes a very tall mass to mount a wire right now it's not doing nothing but telling me what direction the wind is in let's go look, look at uh, uh, two or three different types of antennas that uh, I recommend for this and that I've used in the past with it the antennas I use the most with this system is, uh, well, basically a dipole. This right here is my dipole I built specially for this pole. It's got a very lightweight center connector, and uh, it's actually a link dipole where it's resonant on 20 and 40 meters. This is one of my go-tos with that pole. And I also use it some with my uh, in-fed half wave. This is you know, if I can't find any trees or if I'm in a situation where you can't use trees in whatever park for whatever reason, uh, this is my go-to. goes up a little bit quicker. And it also makes an awesome vertical antenna, and I've used that. So let me, let me draw a couple of those out on paper. This is a closer look at my dipole I use. I use 18-gauge wire. Uh, to make it a little bit more lighter and this is my center connector. I found this I think at a ham fest. It's 3d printed. It looks like uh, it works perfect with your uh, SO239 connector and it's very lightweight it even comes with a hole that you can slip over instead of drilling it out I, I made another uh, a clamp and uh, put some uh, stuff around it so uh, to protect the pole and I just slip this over the pole, attach my coax, and I even use uh, the RG8X. That's a little heavy for these poles, but this, this pole will take it uh, if it's not a super windy day. Uh, hook your coax up, raise the pole up, and uh, you're in business. Tie off your ends here with an inverted V pattern, and you've got a great antenna up at, you know, 40 foot. With the basic dipole, you're just going to raise your pole up with the center connector already attached in coax and just stretch out your two ends of your dipole in like an inverted V pattern and stake them off to the ground like that on each side. And that makes a very good antenna for just a basic dipole. And you're getting a, a dipole up at, at a uh, half of a wavelength for 20 meters so that that is good height for dipole it's hard to do much better than that if you're gonna run this as a uh, use an in fed half wave then you would run your pole up to its length tie off your your wire first to the top of the pole 
and just pull it up and you're going to put your box down over here and if you plan this just right you can uh, put that right near your your picnic bench wherever uh, wherever you're going to set up so put your pole out of the distance and uh, the 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 good thing about this is you use less coax uh, that's why I use the uh, in fed half wave antenna quite a bit during portable operations so very good very good antenna especially with this setup very easy a little bit easier to set up than the dipole these poles are very popular for making just any basic vertical antenna you just put your uh, your center connector at the bottom coax running out and your elements run your element straight up the pole and the good thing about this pole is 40 foot tall so you can actually put a full length uh, quarter wave 40 meter element and I've done that and uh, it works really great you don't have to fold it over or anything and just run you know your radial field you're gonna put radials out more the better on radials that's a whole nother topic but uh yeah and if you've got a center connector you don't have to stick to just one element I, when I take this antenna out myself I put one up at uh, 40 and one at 20 right there and, and tie it off right there and I, I take if it looks a lot like uh, the DX commander well yeah kind of is it's kind of a home homebrew version of, of what his is and uh, but I've never run it over two elements basically because we was in the low spot of the uh, solar cycle and used it extensively up on 40 and it did great it tuned up well and made really good contact so a basic vertical it works great another option is to get you on to 80 meters it's, it's about 40 meter length here but all you've got to do is run your 80 meter wire up to the top and just send it off to a tree in the yard and tie it off there to a tree uh, that's called an inverted L and that works really great and the good thing is you're only tying up about 40 foot is going straight up so you save 40 foot of that uh, 132 foot and uh, half saw this so you don't have to go quite as far maybe your yard is is uh, small enough to find a tree or if you're lucky like me uh, go ask a neighbor <laughs> they might help you out uh, just borrow a limb out, out of a tree, but that is a very popular uh, method This pole also works great for the uh, in fed half wave antenna. I use that quite a bit you Take it up in the field just like that put your transformer box at the bottom run your one wire up to the top And then go through a loop and then find a tree or something to tie it off to uh, Tie it off to a tree and you've got a good inverted L. You can do it for whatever length uh, in fed half wave you make. You know, a 10 through 80 and uh, there you up in there and uh, on, on several, several bands there with that set up. Here's another option for you at your home QTH for the spider beam mast. Take a uh, four by four and dig a hole sink it in the ground in your backyard somewhere it doesn't have to be but about four foot high this one is something different but I've got this one cemented you can strap your uh, spider beam mast to the pole and just leave it there leave your antenna on it and when you say you're stuck in that HOA well then just deploy it right there you're right there in your backyard and when you get through with it just take it Take it right down. No, uh, a few people that that use this method in an HOA, so give it a try. Some final thoughts here that I have on the spider beam 12 meter mast. This is one rock solid, heavy duty telescopic pole. I uh, will not kid you. It is very solid. It is a lot different than using these small. Uh, telescopic fishing poles. This, there's, there's nothing to uh, to compare here with just the way it's built, the quality, and it's going to last a long time. 
but you do want to think out what are you going to do with it before you before you order one because I, I didn't when I first bought it so you want to think out what kind of antenna are you going to put a dipole up or, or an end fed and, and, and how much length you need and, and how portable that you're going to go out with the antenna if you're going to use it at home and put you up a vertical or put you up an inverted V it is great for that especially if you want to get on the 80 meter band and uh, use a lot of that distance going up before you go out it, it's great for that strap it strap it somewhere at the house and uh, use it great in the HOAs but uh, I don't know it's great it's big it's so big that I don't use it as much as I thought I would but I do use it if I'm camping for several days I will take this out but uh, what I've been eyeing is uh, spider beams got a new uh, seven meter mast coming out and uh, I may have to pick that one up because it looks really good to me it's uh, 28 inches long collapsed and weighs uh, two pounds and four ounces and extends up to uh, 23 foot seven meters so uh, that's about what I need with the upcoming solar cycle I'm, I'm finding myself putting up 20 meter verticals 15 10 a lot so that's gonna fit my need it's gonna take the place Probably of this when I get to that point and uh, maybe we'll do a review on that antenna soon, but uh, This works the cheap little things uh, Cheap little fishing poles they work, but they can break on you and I've had that happen. So uh, Look at the spider beam website and uh, they have all different lengths. They have some that are even Taller than this. I don't know how you would handle that. <laughs> this is this is this is tall enough. So, uh, hey, I hope you got something out of that. Appreciate you watching. Uh, something else to maybe add to your your portable arsenal. So, uh, till I catch you again, 73. Hey, I hope you got something out of that. Appreciate you watching. Uh, something else to maybe add to your your portable arsenal. So, uh, till I catch you again, 73.